A couple weeks ago, I saw an ad on Facebook talking and comparing a really unique new device that has just been released to the Apple Vision Pro. Now, at first glance, you would say, wow, this ad really shows that this device, this Guvis G3 Max, is a superior device to the Apple Vision Pro. However, taking a deeper look at this ad, I was surprised to find out that there were some things that were just factually false or very misleading. So not only did I go ahead and get a hold of this headset so we can test it, I don't have an Apple Vision Pro to test with, but I wanted to see if this miscommunication slash misleadingness in these ads translated to the final product. So in today's video, we're gonna check that out. We're gonna check out and review the Guvis G3 Max and see if the ad that we're taking a look at here today lives up to expectations and if the product does as well. Now, why am I focusing so much on an ad, Jay? That's kind of, you know, we, we see ads all the time. I don't wanna watch another ad. This ad's particularly good. Not like good, good, it's like bad, good. So the first thing that you'll notice right here is you're comparing this Guvis G3 Max to the Apple Vision Pro. Now, I don't know about you all, but at the time of this video, you actually can't really get a hold of these devices and they're not available for testing. So that means that you can't go into the Apple store. It's really hard to get a hold of them. And there was a press event and that was really anyone that's gotten to test it has, that's their experience with it. Comes as a surprise where there's a lot of comparison going on here. And I think the first thing I just wanna address is the resolution. If you have two eyes and each have a 2K display and you put them together, that's 5K. I think that's 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 one way to look at it. Sure, it's confusing. Um, if you have two 5K displays and you put them together, that could also technically be 5K, but if you're comparing them, they should at least be apples to apples. So you take a 2K display and a 2K display and put them together, say so that's 5K, a 5K and a 5K should make 10. However, it seems in this ad that this Guvis G3 Max has two 2.5K screens, which as I said, is not bad specs, it's perfectly fine, except when you add those together, you get 5K. That's a great, that's a 5K resolution, sure. So if you were to compare it to the Apple Vision Pro, which has 5K, each 5K displays on each eye, then that should mean that you're comparing a 5K display to a 10K display. However, that's not the case. As you can see in this ad, it says that this is the most advanced 5K display and implying that it is superior to Apple's even though it's half the resolution. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about on here, the next indiscrepancy that I have, is that it talks about that there is no external sources on the Apple Vision Pro. That is false. We clearly saw in the announcement video that you were able to integrate a Mac and have that as a display that could be used in the Apple Vision Pro. Again, flat out false. The next thing that I also wanna point out is they made this comment that the pressure from the Apple Vision Pro causes red marks and creates pressure on the face. Maybe they're pointing to the design here that this is all mounted more on your head, but this still does put pressure on your forehead, so that's not entirely true as well. How did they get to figure that out? Like, I just wanna know when did they get that opportunity to test? Because as I said, the exclusive press event was for press and there was basically invite only. So unless they heard this second hand from somebody that had gone to this event, that kind of makes this uh, kind of statement off of someone's opinion. So of course, you know, I try to at least be fair to companies. And while yes, this is a kind of an egregious mistake, I reached out to them. I said, hey, you know, your ads are incorrect. I provided, you know, them actually a link to a video that kind of explained the first part, actually the first part of this video probably. And I, you know, that's why I sent them. I said, hey, um, can you fix this, please? This is incorrect, uh, you know, do something about this. I was, you know, gonna give them the option to. Um, and then of course they tell me there, yeah, we're gonna remove this ad, we won't advertise. We promise we won't advertise with this ad anymore. So not only do I see this ad again, but a week later. So it's very apparent that, you know, they flat out just said that, you know, that's flat out lied to my face. On top of that, uh, we're gonna move into the drone section next. And um, we're gonna take a look at the, you know, advertising around the drones. Um, Let's hop in there real quick. Well, the first thing you're gonna notice, of course, is this only works with uh, phone devices. You can't use it with like the DJI controller or DJI RC or RC Pro. And this looks pretty good. It's got a quite a good delay. So uh, first, let's just give this a shot. So see how well I can navigate with this. Oh my gosh. This is very, very delayed. Uh, I'm wondering if this is a bandwidth issue. Yeah, it's a good like half a second before this responds. Having this advertised being drone compatible 
when I fly my drone, I'm not flying near any Wi-Fi network. Um, it's very impractical to do so. Um, you're flying out in the wilderness, basically. Uh, you can't really rely on the, the internet so much to, you know, transfer all this data. So I'm going to try going a little bit somewhere different, a little close to the router. So here we are. This is like right, pretty much right next to the router. So yeah, I'm just flying around. And as I said, this is very laggy. It's, 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 this is completely unusable. Um, I, I, you're talking half a second, if not a whole second delay at certain times. This is really hard to navigate when the controls take a second. Like I pull forward and it takes like a whole second for a response. So yeah, in conclusion, um, I guess my biggest complaint is, you know, you're using this as a, a you know, to, to navigate your drones, right? And yeah, besides my face being completely red in order to get this to sit properly. This isn't really something I would cuss, trust with drones. Um, compared to the FPV systems, at least from DJI, uh, you're not going to get what you're looking for. Yeah, this is not something that I can take. It's not not usable to take without a network, um, which is kind of one of my biggest fears when kind of getting this. Anyway, let's hop back inside. The main thing that I was actually really excited for was, of course, this headset that basically would allow you to have this super high resolution with your DJI drone. And I was really excited. I was like, wow, this is going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to trying this out. Um, but it's basically just like casting your phone to your TV. And of course, that's going to be dependent on a, you know, the bandwidth, of course, and uh, you know the, the screen, the network. It's so frustrating that I was really looking forward to it. So I also reached out to the company again and I was like, hey, you know, I'm kind of concerned about, you know, that this isn't really a functional feature. And um, I just don't want to like, you know, I was really excited about this and it's it's not what you know, I was expecting or anywhere close to usable. Um, and they basically told me that they're going to remove this feature and, uh, you know, and stop saying that they support that. But the problem is they've already run a Kickstarter with the set of advertising, right? You've run the Kickstarter now with the advertising that this is a, you know, a product that competes with the Apple Vision Pro that's compatible with drones. And now you're going through and removing all this stuff after you've raised the money, sold products to customers. So again, I just think it's a little questionable, that behavior. Um, so next up, we're going to try using this as uh, like a monitor, setting it up and you know, using it that way. My one frustrating thing, of course, is that this is just very, very difficult to see kind of some of the very edges of the screen here, specifically down here in the corners. Um, I don't know how that works. Also, this needs to be pushed closer to my face so I can see that which isn't something that this headset really offers. The screen, what you see here is good, especially when you're looking at monitors that are 32 inches, that are, uh, you know, 100, are 2K and 144 hertz, and you can put them just as close. I, I really think that this is something that is probably you want to take on the go. So really, I think the only market that you're looking at that you'd want to get something, the kind of person that would want to get this, is someone that wanted to watch movies, sitting down somewhere as i said you know for a gaming product to use this as like a monitor for a gaming system while it is slightly more immersive i still can't justify paying 800 to a thousand five hundred dollars on this headset when uh as i said a, a gaming monitor is just literally uh like two hundred dollars for the exact same screen and specs um, on, obviously they have to have two screens in here. Obviously there are some differences. And then of course there's no VR function as well. So again, I, I don't particularly, especially with it being the exact same size as my, uh, at least coming up as this 32 mod, 32 inch monitor up here. It literally is just, I'd, I'd actually personally prefer the 32 inch monitor while it does look very crisp, while it does very feel very immersive and you know, it's nice and all that stuff. It's just, as I said, un difficult to justify just having buying a two hundred dollar monitor and not paying. You could buy like five two K monitors with the same screen specs. And this is roughly what the Android user interface looks like. You can kind of go through and select things. You know, say for example, you want to use this as you know an Android TV. This is this box isn't bad in my opinion. It's a, like just a standard Android TV, and for only being like 50 bucks, it's something you could plug in. Especially if you're just using this as to watch TV. Um, you know, a 2K TV. All the TVs are like 4K right now. Um, you could set up a 4K TV, put it 
uh, like 42 inch 4k tv set it you know maybe like three feet away two feet away from you and you'd have just about as much viewing angle with a higher resolution and i also think i really do question as well the the choice of making the refresh rate 120 hertz um simply put because if you want the 120 hertz um gamers may not be the ones interested in getting a non-vr headset and then also the people that want to watch the you know movies with the goggles on probably want 4k so you know, I know that's a limitation of the headset, but still, that's just such an odd choice to put, you know, get the extra screen for 144 or 120 hertz when, you know, gamers are not going to be too interested in getting just a static headset that's something that's not VR. And then again, comparing it to the Apple Vision Pro is a whole nother conversation too. I also don't completely understand at all. In conclusion, I have a couple objections with how this was advertised. Um, if you tell people that this is supported for drones, and then you go through and, you know, you ch say that you're going to change that. Um, if someone reaches out to you, does you a favor, says that your marketing is wrong, um, save you from that legal liability, and you just choose to ignore it and lie to them, um, tell them you're going to fix it and not. I, I, I personally, this device is not for me. Um, I will recognize that this is not something that I would purchase. I hate to make such a negative review, but at the same time, like all around, I'm pretty disappointed with... The performance. I mean, again, this is, you know, I just feel like they, they, they put the money in the wrong places. Like you really could have done, made this a lot cheaper had you not like put these optics in there and gone with what Apple does with, you know, the drop in magnetic ones. Like there is a reason why Apple like is the best in the world. Again, like it's, it's a wonderful, cool looking device, but I have at this point, no use for it right? I got this to use it with drones. Can't use it with drones. It's not something that's practical to use for gaming. I mean, maybe if you have a controller, entirely different story, um, but it's not practical to use for gaming. And finally, it's like, again, it's advertised to compete with the VR headset and it doesn't have any VR functionality. At that price, you get like a MetaVision Pro or something, and at least then you have the pass through um, and also have that screen in front of you. Yes, it may be a little resolution, but at least you have a lot of that functionality. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.